Hopefully everybody had a good Valentine's slash Singles Awareness Day. I know I did. I got to spend the day with my girlfriend, so that was pretty great. And I'm just sitting here now about to narrate this really good Yu Yu battle I had against my good friend Wander of the Wind, somebody that everybody should know by this point. His channel link is going to be down in the description, so make sure to go check him out. And I actually think I've never beaten land in Yu Yu, so hopefully I can turn that losing streak around in this battle, but I guess you just have to wait and see until the end of the battle. But looking at threats on his side of the field, Heracross is easily the number one threat I'm going to have to watch out for because if it's Scarfed, he outspeeds 5 6 of my team. So yeah, that thing is definitely scary as hell going into this battle. But I'm going to be leading off of my Mew as it leads off of the Rotom. I know I should be able to take any one singular hit from this Rotom and still be able to get up my Stealth Rocks. As it turns out that he has the Will-O-Wisp, I'm thinking that he is the specially defensive set. So I'm just going to stay in and go for the Psy Shock just to get off some damage. As he goes for the Thunderbolt, that actually does way more damage than I thought it would. So I'm thinking that maybe he's the offensive non-choice Rotom which runs max special attack, max speed with dual stab, will-o-wisp and pain split. So not wanting to take an overheat or another thunderbolt, I decided to switch directly into my Snorlax. As he does go for the overheat, I can just stay in and go for the body slam. Even if he switches in Slowbro and Gligar and I paralyze them, it's not going to be too big of a deal because I do have Pokemon to deal with them. But he just leaves in Rotom, goes for the will-o-wisp just to force me to rest up sooner than I would have to. Luckily for me, I'm able to get the paralysis and knowing that he more likely would want to switch out to either the Slowbro or the Gligar, I decide to now go for the rest as he does bring in the Gligar, which obviously I'm just expecting him to want to get up his Stealth Rocks, which means I can now get a free switch into my Virizion, but he makes a very good double switch out into his Sceptile. Now, I don't want to take a possible Specs Hidden Power Fire, so I'm just going to switch into Laura, uh, my Mew as Death Fodder, so yeah, sorry about the Laura, you kind of have to go, but it turns out that he has Swords Dance, which means he has the Flying Gem with Acrobatics, and after he gets that off, if he has Rock Slide as his last coverage move, um, he basically sweeps through my whole team, which means my only real chance to stop this thing is to hope he misses Rock Slide, but he has Earthquake! And <laughs> oh, I was so frustrated when I saw that because if I had known that, I would have just switched directly into my Zapdos, and because he has Earthquake, Leaf Blade does nothing to me, Acrobatics does nothing to me, and obviously I'm not affected by Earthquake, so Zapdos is easily the number one switch in to this Sceptile, and I'm just gonna go straight for the Heat Wave because I am modest, max special attack with Life Orb, even if he wants to bring in Gligar, I'm gonna still get off a good chunk of damage on that, but he actually ends up switching into the Snorlax, and I'm just gonna go straight for the Volt Switch, and Volt Switch on now into my own Snorlax, because I know he more than likely does just want to go for the Body Slam, and I don't want to bring in my Blastoise or my Virizion to get paralyzed, so with Snorlax asleep, it's the best switch into his own Snorlax. As I go for the sleep talk, I manage to pull the body slam and get off a good chunk of damage. Unfortunately, he goes for the whirlwind and whirlwinds me out to my Zapdos. So now the rest is very, very obvious. And if I did stay in and go for Thunderbolt, that honestly would have been very stupid for me to do. So I do just Volt Switch out into my Virizion. Luckily for me, he doesn't predict that and goes for the rest, which was the safest play he could have done. So that's really good because if he had taken out my Virizion, I easily would have lost this battle because Virizion is really the number one thing I have for Gligar. Um, yes, I do have Blastoise, but still Scald will not take it out. As he brings in the Rotom, I actually went for the Giga Drain thinking he would want to bring in the Slowbro. So I'm able to knock out Rotom with the combination of Giga Drain and Close Combat as he brings back in the Sceptile because I believe Sceptile's max speed is 372. The Acrobatics is very obvious and obviously he can outspeed me. And again, as I mentioned, Zapdos is the number one switch into the Sceptile, which means I need to need to keep the Sceptile around and I'm gonna reveal to him that I do have the roost as he brings in the Gligar and here he makes a very risky play stays in goes for the stealth rocks and now he knows I am not carrying hidden power ice on my Zapdos luckily for me he actually doesn't expect me to have hidden power ice on Virizion and I'm able to clean take out that Gligar which means you know, Lantonio, if you're subscribed to me, watch my videos because you would have known I have Hidden Power Ice on Virzion. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, he brings in this giant ass threat, which at this point, I honestly do not need Snorlax. It's the most expendable thing on my team and the most 
unhelpful Pokemon. As I can get a free switch into my Blastoise with this Gligar gone, he has nothing else on his team that carries any form of hazards, which means I can freely go for the Rapid Spin as he brings in the Slowbro. And the way he brought it in had me very suspicious just because I know Land really likes Spec Slowbro, so expecting him to go for a Grass Knot or a possible Hidden Power Grass. I decided to switch directly into my Zapdos. Thankfully, he doesn't go for the Ice Beam, and I'm gonna be able to take the Grass Knot like a monster, and then I make a very, very stupid play, and I go for the Thunderbolt. And if I had just gone for the Volt Switch, I wouldn't have been able to Volt Switch out into my Verizion and gone for either the Giga Drain or the Close Combat, but no, because I went for Thunderbolt, now I have to go for Volt Switch and I have to switch into my Blastoise because if he does pull the Body Slam and paralyzes me and it was my Verizion that I Volt Switched into, then that's really going to be bad for me so my best switch in right now is going to be this Blastoise and of course he pulls the Body Slam and paralyzes me. So luckily I didn't switch into Verizion right there and I still have a chance to win this battle. So I'm just going to stay in knowing that Scald really wouldn't do much to Snorlax. I did just go for the Roar. Luckily for me he doesn't pull the Whirlwind. And I'm going to be able to get rid of this giant ass threat which I was hoping wouldn't be a problem. But yeah that stupid play with Thunderbolt is really made Snorlax a bigger issue than it really had to be. And because the switch out into Zapdos is very obvious I know he's going to go for the Stone Edge. So I stay in. Take it. He crits me, then I get paralyzed. But he actually misses a second one, although I went for the roar, I should have just gone for the skull, but I thought that he would just take me out with the stone edge, and that was really dumb of me. I should have just clicked skull either way. And yeah, you're going to see that that little bit of damage actually could have helped me out later on in the battle, especially because I was in torrent range, so I would have got that boost. But hey, it's fine. As he takes me out with the side shock, I can now bring in Zapdos. And I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. I really don't care if he wants to bring in Snorlax because my last at this point is Verizion. And I can Volt Switch into Verizion, click Close Combat, and just watch something die on his team. So, yeah. I take out the Slowbro as I go into my Verizion. He is then going to bring in the Sceptile. And at this point, I was like, well, fuck, I lost. But it turns out that his Sceptile is actually adamant and not jolly, which means I actually outspeed him. And I'm going to be able to easily take him out with the close combat, which means I might actually still have a chance to win this battle and turn this losing streak around. So he brings in the Snorlax because he knows at this point his last chance to win is to hope that Stone Edge knocks out my Verizion before I knock him out with the close combat. And then that his Stone Edge hits on my Zapdos, which means if he misses just one Stone Edge, I still have a chance to win. So I'm going to go for the Stone Edge as he goes for his own Stone Edge. I actually managed to live just because I am part fighting and is not stabbed. And I miss my Stone Edge because I was just really hoping I would get the crit. And at this point, it all comes down to whether or not he will hit this Stone Edge on my Zapdos. And, and does he hit it? Does he hit it? Uh, uh. <laughs> he hits the Stone Edge and easily takes out my Zapdos. And that's going to be the very narrow 1-0 victory in Land's favor. So, I am still not able to turn the losing streak in UU around against Land. But hey, it was a really fun battle. Even with the hacks and the misplays, it was still just a 1-0 loss. But you guys should definitely go check out Land. He's got some good uploads. And he's just really wanting to reach 1K. So it would be really nice if I could help, help him get to that. But with that, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Do what you want, do what you please. And yeah, um, later.